Hey everybody, we're Engine here, bringing you out another Starcraft commentary. Last group of the Whistle continues, group D is going to be second match. We're getting very, very close to finding out who it is that's going to continue in this group. Here we're going to have a PvZ for you guys, it's going to be rank 2 of the OG and Sparkies against Quanro of CJ Entis. Uh, Horang 2 hasn't played much at all, really. He's known for the fact that the first time he played a televised match, he beat Flash, and he followed it up by beating GG Play, and quickly afterwards, he, he was quickly put into the A team of the OG and Sparkies. So he's a very promising pro, pro tell player. We're going to see how he does there. Quanro, he's a guy that's been around a while, and it was quite promising for one, at one point, but all in all, he's just, you know, he's just your regular Zerg player. And for him, this is his worst matchup, so we're going to see how he does. Four, three, two, one, go. It's going to be on Neo, Neo Harmony, which is more Zerg favorite than Protoss favorite due to um, the fact that those mazes don't really help the Protoss maneuverability, but do actually help Zerg maneuverability. So it's a four player map. Got your pretty standard stuff, got your main, got your... <clears throat> you have your main, you have your uh, natural. You have, uh, kind of inside of your main, blocked by a Zelnaga temple, you have another mineral only that you can technically take. They're much easier to take as a Terran, because it's simply you can just float like a command center in there and just distance mine or something. It's more popular, but it shouldn't be too much big of a problem to mine a Zerg, especially if you mine like from behind, from the... Other location, but all in all, we're going to see what kind of builds that we're going to see here. Uh, both players, I should be pretty much going for colors so far. I haven't done that yet, but yeah, we're going to have it, as the Protoss in red at the 11 o'clock is going to be Harang 2, and in blue, in light blue at 7 o'clock is going to be the, the Zerg Quanro. Harang 2 putting down a pylon and scouting very early, so he's going to has some scouting information right away, he's going to know exactly what Quanro is up to, he has his probes who's setting down, I'm not quite sure what Quanro is, is doing, oh that overlord was sent away, I think that overlord probably spotted the probe, but I don't know if the probe spotted the overlord or not, we're going to see overall, but Quanro is going to know with this, he's going to know where Harang 2 is as well, and apparently Quanro is going for a 12 hatch from what I can see, he's saving up, he's not getting a 9 pull quite yet, it might be, okay never mind, so it is a 9 pull, so I think he went for an overlord for it, he has 12 uh, pool then, not a 12 hatch, but a 12 pool. Harang 2 is going to hang around with his probe, he's going to put down his forge, so standard forge pa fast expand, we're going to see how he does that overall. You can see whether he steals some gas, or probably going to go around to try to prevent that base. Yeah, the drone going to come out, going to try to set down a hatchery, and that probe's going to be irritating and just prevent that as long as possible. The drone's going to fight him in that probe a little bit. We're going to see how well Harang dimensions prevent that. Meanwhile, Quandra's overall is going to move inside and going to scout everything out. Forge now ready, so the cannons should be coming up fairly soon. With a 12 hat, with a 12 pool, you you have to put down cannons. It's it's not quite a danger, but still you got to be careful. But careful and put down cannons just in case. Polls almost completely even, like one or two people more think that Quanro will win, but overall a lot of people excited for this new guy. Four Zerglings being uh, made by Quanro. He's gonna, no, six Zerglings, we're gonna see whether he sets that out, try to do some harassment, try to run by or what, but I think those cannons are actually gonna be there in time. Oh, there's still, despite those cannons, there's plenty of space to try to make a run by with those Zerglings, so he has to be very careful there. I think Harang 2 should use some Probes to block that or not, meanwhile still has that scouting probe inside, it's finally going to be engaged by a couple of Zerglings of Quanro, going to see what kind of damage that manages to do, but now these Zerglings for Quanro are going to move in, nope, going to see those cannons they're going to do, but there is enough space to try to do them around by, but overall, we, when he goes back behind the minerals, it's still, those cannons still going to be able to fire at you, a, a three hatch build, interesting, three base build from Quanro, he's putting down a third hatchery quite a long ways as well, Quite a long way away from his uh, natural and from his main at the eight o'clock. No, four o'clock at the four o'clock. So we're gonna see whether that turns out to be a bad thing and makes him get a little bit overextended or not. Whether it just helps him out. Well, it's not, definitely not gonna be spotted for a while. Although I think Harang 2 should be a little bit suspicious at this point. I mean, where is stuff? There's no lair coming up. 
yet if this was a two base build there would be a layer coming going probably I don't even see a gas for Quanro at this point so I definitely think Krang 2 should suspect some sort of deviation there uh, that probe again not going to be able to get up the ramp a second time so he's not going to get the full scout not going to exactly know what's going on there for all he knows there's the hatchery being put down the step but he's going to move out I'm going to see whether he manages to run away from the Zerglings and go to that 4 o'clock base uh, apparently not he's not even thinking that he's just going to try to get that probe away probably inside of his own base and just Dance it around as long as humanly possible. We're now coming up also for Quandro, so he finally has some gas mining. We're gonna see where it is that he can kind of build. He's gonna go probably gonna go three hatcheries into Spire, into five hatch Hydro. At least that's the really popular uh, ZVP build here. And on this uh, Zerg favorite map, I think that's definitely a good option. Rank 2 now going for Sargon might be forced to actually put down more cannons if not right away then at least soon enough uh, quite a few zerglings running around now but Quan are probably gonna just focus on this economy for now the probe still running around avoiding zerglings as much as he can but he still hasn't seen that third hatchery at that four o'clock location so that's pretty bad there for rank 2 but rank 2 is still doing a pretty good job of keeping his probe alive just running around now another drone there being sent down the mine thought maybe that was gonna plop their building but no probe is just gonna run around do whatever he can Apollon being put in the natural, Citadel of a Dune being followed up after that Stargate, so we could be seeing a standard beast to build here. Uh, Stargate to get some Corsairs going, Citadel of a Dune into Temple Archives. So Spire, meanwhile, now up for Quanor, so he's going for these uh, three, three Spire, five Hatch, five uh, Hydra push here. Just going to get some Scourge going to prevent any serious Corsair harassment. And after that, he should be able to go and just pump a bunch of Hydra. We're going to see, not seeing any uh, Crusaders actually being built there. Um, we're going to see overall what it is. He might be just putting them in the Stargate. I've never, I don't think I've seen protesters actually do any fake outs. I think they always build a Corsair. If it's not more than one, it's at least one Corsair. There we go, finally Corsair being made. It's at least one Corsair to get the scout in. And even if it gets taken out by the Scourge, it still is a pretty good scout. And with Corsairs, you should be able to fly around to that 4 o'clock location and definitely figure out what's going on there. Uh, meanwhile, more drones being sent into the location. We're going to see whether they use the location to plop them down. Two more hatcheries now going down for... Quanor, so yeah, he's doing that tech switch, also getting his Hydra then just getting that Spire to get some Scourge, putting down a lot, also an Evolution Chamber for upgrades, now he's just going to get and pump as many Hydras as he can, we're going to see whether he goes for Range Weapon upgrades or Carapace upgrades, just to try to keep alive against his Canton, the first Corsair, now going to fly around and see this, I don't see any Scourge, meanwhile, uh, we're going to see whether he managed to harass anything, Creep Colony also being put down, he's being careful just in case there's some sort of ground attack imminent from... Um, rank 2. So Quan actually playing very carefully. He's putting down second colonies in both of his natural as well in his second base at the day, at the four o'clock because he definitely doesn't want to get attacked. Um, more advanced players they usually like, delay that and just aren't as careful. They just know they depend on their own timing and all of that just to know exactly when to put down a second colony. Uh, Saviors, for instance, a good example of that. Also, always delaying having to use those windows as long as humanly possible. Savior, Jadon, those kind of players, they usually do that. But Quanro playing safely, putting down second colonies in both of his bases, or at least creep colonies, so just in case. Meanwhile, you know, Force Zealous now, speed upgrade, going to run down that location. I didn't actually see his Templar Archives from the uh, Harang too, so I might be actually just thinking of going for a push. Two more creep colonies not going down those four zealots with those zerglings there, and that second colony shouldn't be able to do anything, but no, they're actually going to run right into the main. Oh boy, four zealots right into the main. This should be a lot of damage. This should be a lot of damage done here. Those four zealots are going to completely wreck this economy. They're going to kill as many drones as they can. Now, three zealots still alive. Hydras and zerglings, meaning those lots of drone kills, though. Plenty of zerglings, and still two zealots, although those drones being thanks sound pretty well, and the zerglings being used very effectively. More drones now dying. Only one zealot alive now, so actually that's I'm not sure if actually that was a very cost-effective harassment. All four zealots, one almost dead now. That one with one kill. I don't know if he'll manage another one. No, he does not. I think Quan only lost like four or five drones there. While Harang 2 obviously lost four zealots. That's, I'm not sure if I can call that really cost-effective because he really wanted a lot more kills. That score's going to fly around, spot these four gateways that are going to be put down. So, still going to try to get some uh, Corsairs going. Ooh, hiding his Corsairs in the upper left-hand corner. 
uh, just get, getting a sizable force, possibly gonna use those to support a ground force. Also has a reaver going now, so he might be actually going for Corsair Reaver. They did put down quite a few gamers, so he might be sort of going for Corsair Reaver and supporting that with a ground army. We're gonna see whether he has enough resources to do that. Quando Milbang, meanwhile, building a lots and lots of hydras from all of his bases. He's gonna get his mate. Range going, uh, Sabnetus Core spinning, um, not quite sure what it is for, could be for everybody's observatory as well as the Temple Archives meal coming out for Harang too. Now this Corsair is finally going to fly out there, a decent number, and it should be able to kill overwards quite si quite easily there. Now those Scourge there, they shouldn't be able to do too much damage as long as they avoid this. They now it has those five Corsairs, also has a speed upgrade shuttle with a Reaver inside, so that's what's going to fly around and try to do some damage. With a large amount of Corsair, he should be able to prevent any Scourge from taking out of the shuttle as long as he's very careful. Also, he has to be very